Hi, it's Ben Pollock here with Lead FTS and True Nutrition. And today I want to talk about my plans for the rest of the year and how I plan to go about training to achieve them. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know that uh, my big goal for the year is to compete in another national level bodybuilding show, do better than I did last year, and also compete at the Pioneer Open and to hit a PR and not actually jump out of the meet for the fourth time in a row. So, in the first month of the year, Taylor and I, my training coach, we were experimenting with some hypertrophy methods. We found some uh, programming techniques that really worked very well for us. We also determined that in order to hit the grand goal I have of 2305 and to earn my pro card in bodybuilding, those are my two grand goals, I need to add some more size. I'm not going to cut it around 250. It's going to have to be around 270, 280. So we determined it's time to take a step back and devote a little bit more time to hypertrophy. I was not upset about this because as you know, I really enjoyed the hypertrophy training that Taylor and I did towards the end of my last prep. Um, but we wanted to try some new things out. We're all about learning and research. And so today that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about is the approach that I'll be taking. I also wanna give a plug to uh, Shelby Starnes who will be my nutrition coach for this year. I'm extremely grateful for Shelby for taking me on. Uh, if you guys know Shelby or follow him online, he usually only works with women. So I was extremely grateful that he made that exception for me um, because Shelby's background is very similar to mine. You know, he came up training DC methods, mountain dog methods. He worked with uh, John Meadows, Dave Tate, Justin Harris, uh, and he was able to kind of synthesize all that information and use it on himself to get a pro card. And so that's exactly my goal as well. So I, I'm very confident that he'll be able to help me. Um, Justin was a great coach. I just felt like, uh, you know, to get that actual card, I would need somebody who had a little bit more diversity of training experience. Um, so, on to the training itself. Uh, like I mentioned, background, a lot of, uh, a lot of time spent looking up to Dante Trudell, who uh, owns True Nutrition, one of my sponsors, and also is the founder of the Dog Crap Method of Training that some of you guys may be familiar with. And then obviously John Meadows, who prepped me for my first bodybuilding show. Uh, and I want to try to combine those. This is nothing new, right? If you guys are familiar with these methods, and we'll get into them in a second, um, people have been uh, kind of on one side of the spectrum or another. Dante's more the high-intensity type of guy. He really came up with a formula uh, to apply to the Mike Menser, the Dorian Yates style of training that works extraordinarily well for many people, especially when they add, when they add size. John Meadows is more the traditional high-volume method uh, type of guy, and we know from history how successful that can be uh, with any bodybuilder. Combining them gets really tricky because when a lot of people try to mess with programs, they end up undermining uh, the original kind of goals of the method. The thing is though, very few people enjoy following cookie cutter programs. They want to customize it themselves. And I'm confident that Taylor and I have enough knowledge and experience in my own body that we can do that successfully. So today that's, I'm gonna show you guys how we did that, and hopefully give you some ideas on how you can do it for yourself if it's something you wanna give a shot at. So, dog crap training, if you're not familiar with it, a couple key principles. Number one, high intensity, low frequency. Excuse me, high frequency. Apologize about that. Low volume, relatively low volume. We'll get into that a little bit later, maybe in another video. But basically what you do is you pick a set of movements. Uh, so you're gonna have three movements for each of your eight uh, major body parts. So you got chest, shoulders, triceps, biceps, and also forearms in there, uh, back width, back thickness, calves, hamstrings, and quads. You pick three exercises for each of those. These need to be builder exercises. The ones that you can add significant amount of weight to over a long period of time. They're not, you know, tiny isolation exercises. And you're going to do one rest pause set, which means you take a weight you get for eight to 12 repetitions. You do a set to failure, perfect form, rest about 15 seconds, same weight, straight bam, another set to failure, perfect form, rest 15, 20 seconds, same thing again. Your total number of reps is your rest pause score, and if you hit your threshold for that particular movement, you move up. The threshold generally is around 11 to 15 reps, this changes based on what movement you're, you're actually using. So, each time you perform that exercise, you have to hit it, you have to hit a PR. This is possible because of the way Dante rotates a movement. So he divides things into an A workout and a B workout. The A workout is chest, shoulder, it's essentially push and upper back, or push and pull. 
And then the third move, uh, the second day, is biceps and legs. And you're going to rotate these to training for just three days a week. So week one, you'll do uh, workout A on Monday, workout B Wednesday, workout C Friday, and then the, or workout A Friday again. Uh, and then the following week, you'll switch it. So you'll do workout B on Monday, workout A on Wednesday, workout B again on, on Friday. And each of those movements are rotating, so you're not hitting the movement so frequently, so frequently you get stale. Uh, this is an extremely good way of training, especially for athletes who have a good strength base like myself, but don't have as much muscle mass as they might like. Uh, it's, it's pretty similar to how I trained uh, last year with Justin when I was adding that, that 60 pounds of muscle to my frame. Uh, the downside of dog crap training that is you know, professed by many people is that uh, one rest pause set to failure, no matter how intense that might be, uh, isn't necessarily enough for some athletes. And if you look at other top level bodybuilders, very rarely do they use uh, just one set to failure on a, on a movement. It's not always the case, but, but usually you're going to see a lot more volume in that. Uh, and Dante addresses this through exercise selection and through the use of what he calls widow makers, which are um, for certain advanced trainees and for certain body parts, you'll add... Uh, more of a directed, not, not necessarily an isolation exercise, but a little bit of a lighter exercise uh, that you'll do for a, a back-breaking set of 20 plus reps. So that's, uh, you know, a very, very high level overview of dog crap training. I'll put uh, links in the description below with more details if you want to research that. But I'd like to move on to mountain dog training, which is high volume and moderate frequency, I would say. John has a lot of different programs. Uh, and if you've read his book, The Brutality of Mountain Dog Training, you're familiar with his method, which allows for a lot of flexibility in terms of frequency. But it tends to be much higher volume. John is also a high-intensity guy, but his intensity is a little bit different than Dante's. Dante's is using heavy weights. Mountain Dog's idea of intensity is high effort. Um, and so I'm going to recategorize that uh, and say that um, this, these are both high-effort programs. High-intensity here. I would argue mountain dog programs are actually lower intensity in the powerlifting sense where you're not using so much of a percentage of your one rep max. It's a little bit of a nuanced issue. John's programs are comprised of four stages. So generally they're broken up. Uh, he has some push-pull leg programs, but generally they're, they're traditional bodybuilding split. So you have chest, or chest and shoulders, back, legs, and arms. And... For John's programs, they, they follow four stages. You've got your activation stage. Activation stage, you're going to do a, a movement that doesn't really hurt your joints. It's, it's not a barbell movement. It's maybe an isolation movement, probably machine movement. It's something you'll do for moderate to high reps, short of failure, just to get some blood flow through the areas that you're going to be working. This is extremely effective in injury prevention, which is another shortfall of the Dante program. Using heavy weights all the time does tend to lead to wear and tear on your joints. Dante uses, again, he uses movement selection to address this, only choosing movements that don't hurt you. If you haven't trained with Dante, though, it's very difficult to do that yourself, which is a little bit of a caveat. Two is the explosive strength phase. Uh, and this is kind of a heavy movement that you train, not necessarily using rest pause uh, techniques, but used in the same way. You're, you're really trying to push heavy weights here. This, this would be the higher intensity, relatively higher intensity stage of John's programs. After that, you have your supra maximal pump, which is really just you're, you're using traditional bodybuilding techniques uh, and isolation exercises to get a really good pump in your target muscle. Both of these guys end their training with uh, stretching. Dante uses loaded stretching, so you're just going to take heavy dumbbells. Let's say for a chest stretch, you take heavy dumbbells, you do a dumbbell fly, and you just hold the position. John actually has you rep out with the dumbbells, but again, the point is to work the muscle in a stretch position. So on the face of it, except for this explosive strength phase and the stretching phase, it would seem that these two programs are pretty, pretty different. However, I do think they can be applied uh, in certain ways where you can combine the best parts of both worlds without any of the drawbacks. And so that's what this, the rest of the video is going to be about. So. I'm going to use myself as an example. I do not think that there is one right way to do this. I think that there are many, many wrong ways to do this. And so understanding your body and your goals is essential if you are going to do this properly. All right. I want to preface that 
um, because I'm afraid that many people are just going to follow exactly what I say, not realize that what I'm saying is very much tailored to my own situation and have subpar results for that. So that, that's my disclaimer here. But let's say that you are me and you have this issue where from a bodybuilding perspective, your chest, your legs, and your back overpower your shoulders and arms. And from a powerlifting perspective, your arms and your shoulders are not able to support enough weight to bench press what you need to hit your goal. In that case, obviously, you need to add more ball. You need to change something that you're doing for your shoulders and arms. And I am a high intensity guy in that in the DC sense where I'm using relatively low volume and I'm pushing myself to a very high percentage of my wonder max. So we can be pretty darn sure with 20 years of training that doing more of that is not going to bring up my shoulders and arms. So for the shoulders and arms, I'm going to take the mountain dog approach. I'm going to maintain my chest, back, and leg strength using the dog crap method. Okay, more or less, we are gonna make some changes because what I wanna do is combine the best aspects of both programs. So what I'm gonna do is have two base days that will be dog crap days, and two, we'll call them extremity days, weak point days, pump days. Those will be the mountain dog sessions. Those will be pump, delts, and arms. And then I'm going to make my base sessions for dog crap a little bit different. Instead of having the push, pull, and then biceps, legs, I'm going to have press, pull. This is base A. And then I'm going to have legs for B. And I'm still going to rotate movements on these. I'm still going to go for a heavy rest pause set. I'm still going to try and PR on these big, 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 Big major movements every time I train them. I'm not gonna worry about it so much on the delts and arms because I've been down that road and it doesn't work for me. I know it doesn't work for me. I'm not gonna waste more time doing something that I know doesn't work. And I'm just gonna arrange this in a typical seven day calendar split. So it'll look like this. On day one, we'll do Monday, Wednesday, that's not how that goes. That's not how that goes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And that'll be off Sunday. Alright? This will be dog crap A, B, arms, rest, dog crap A, delts. The next week, it'll flip flop exactly like in the DC program. B, A, arms, B, delts. And I'll just keep that up, rotating my exercises for the A and B, and just going nuts on the arms and delt days, trying to get sufficient volume to train them, to, to make them improve and grow and get stronger. Now, the individual workouts are going to follow a structure similar to John's method, because I'm using the rest pause, remember that's my, that's my main system of progression that I'm stealing from the DC method. From the mountain dog method, I'm gonna start each workout, even if it's a, a dog crap workout, I'm gonna start that with an activation movement. Because I'm getting up there in age, I'm 33, and I do, am at the point where I have to start worrying about my joints. Then I'll move on to either my rest pause set, or maybe if I'm doing arms or delts, maybe I'll include a heavier movement there. But likely, I'm not going to, because I already have the heavy movements in my base days. The, pre the heavy pressing movements, they're gonna give some stimulation to my delts and my triceps. The heavy pulling movements are going to give some stimulation to my biceps. So really what I need to focus on is accumulated volume, and I'll likely do that using only isolation exercises. In John's handbook himself, in John's handbook itself, that's not a sentence, I'm sorry guys. In John's handbook, he explains that he recommends skipping the explosive phase for arms because of the issues that it can cause the joints. So we'll start with activation. If applicable, we'll go to the explosive strength phase, and then we will skip in the A and B workouts, we'll skip the pump phase because I don't need to bring up my chest, back, and legs, but we will use it in the arms and delt days, and then no matter what, we'll end with that stretching. We have the super max pump, and then end with the stretch. So I like this because it gives some consistency throughout the course of the week, even though we're still addressing our weak points much differently than we are the strong points that we're just trying to maintain. 
So this was just a very brief overview. I'm gonna get much more detailed into it if there's interest. If there's not interest, that's cool, I understand. This is something that's um, pretty nuanced and maybe a little bit advanced. And so if that's not something you wanna hear about, please do let me know in the comments below. Conversely, if it is something that you'd like to know more about, maybe you see a sample program for, uh, then I'd be more than happy to, to continue along this road. So I hope this was somewhat helpful for you at the very least. Uh, I hope maybe curious about the dog crap and mountain dog methods of training. Uh, and, you know, I hope you'll keep following me and, and leaving feedback and being supportive because I really do appreciate that. So that's all I've got for today. Uh, hopefully I'll keep seeing you guys around and I'll be sure to uh, be vlogging, I guess, a lot more of my prep this year on Instagram. So please make sure to follow me there as well. And uh, Until next time, thanks strong.